always that little bit of something missing in my life. I guess I was seeking the meaning of it all, but in all the wrong places and in all the wrong ways. At the end of the Second World War, Europe is in ruins. My journey, uh, I guess I could say, begins before I was even born. In 1957, when my parents immigrated to Canada from Mannheim, Germany. My family is Jewish, and during the war, they were in hiding. My paternal grandfather was captured and put into a camp, and my mother lost her father. Both my parents, Trudy and Carl, after the war were quite bitter and uh, desperately wanted to start a new life in a new country. They tried really hard to be Canadian. They changed their names and downplayed their heritage quite a bit. Unlike my parents, I reached out and embraced my Jewish faith. But I was still seeking something I don't know what. And when my search was over, Sandra was gone, and in her place was Selma. Selma was the name I chose when I converted from Judaism to Islam. Selma was one of the Prophet's wives, and she was the nurturer. She was the one that uh, looked after everybody. And to me, that was very close to my own name because I searched the origins of Sandra. Sandra means helper of mankind. My interest in Islam goes way back to the 70s. Um, I, I was probably about 13 when I heard that Cat Stevens had converted to Islam and was now known as Yusuf Islam. And I found that so fascinating and wanted to know about Islam. In 2001, I was hit by a drunk driver and had to learn to walk again. And as my car was flying through the air, I, I was totally awake, thinking, okay, is this how I'm going to die? At the time that the accident happened, I was in a position in my life where I really didn't know what I wanted to do with the rest of my life. I would say that the, the biggest turning point was my mother's illness with cancer and her, um, her death in 2005. And that really solidified my move towards Islam. I went to India in 2005, two weeks after my mother's death. It was the month of Ramadan when I got home. My first night there, the Adhan went off at 5 in the morning, and I was so overwhelmed by the power of the sound of the Adhan that I was actually terrified. I went to the window, I stood there listening, and there came over me a feeling of complete happiness and peace and belonging. That was the moment that made me take that leap, that leap of faith. The Shahada is the um, affirmation one makes when they convert to Islam. And it is very simple. Um, it's just the affirmation that there is only one God and no other God. And that's what you believe in. As I understand, uh, Sister Salma, you did uh, some studies prior to this moment about Islam. And what always fascinated me were the similarities between Judaism and Islam. And I just found that the connection between the two was so very powerful. The beginning of your step towards Islam by declaring your faith and speaking the following two sentences, which is to bear witness that there is no God but Allah and to bear witness that Muhammad is his messenger. Without any further delay, we will go ahead and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his blessing in that blessed moment that we are witnessing all of us. Allah, Allah, Allah. Ashhadu. Ashhadu. Allah. Allah. Ilaha. Ilaha. Illa. Illa. Allah. Allah. Wa ashhadu. Wa ashhadu. Anna. Anna. Muhammadan. Muhammadan. Rasulullah. Rasulullah. I bear witness. I bear witness. That there is no God. That there is no God. But Allah. But Allah. 
and I bear witness and I bear witness that Muhammad that Muhammad is his messenger is his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mubarak takbir Allahu akbar alhamdulillah rabbil alamin it was really awkward having to tell my friends and my family I mean there's no way of saying that I had moved away from Judaism to become a Muslim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen When I started to wear hijab uh, apart from being terribly nervous for the first four weeks um, was um, how much uh, better I became um, at thinking about my words and thinking about my reactions to others I'm constantly amazed at how people react to the veil I just don't get what the big deal is. I guess the problem is that people in North America perceive a veiled woman as oppressed and subservient. Maybe in some countries or in some regimes that might be true, but not here in Canada. Here we have the freedom to choose, and I chose to do this. What they don't understand is that it is a requirement for women to, to veil, to cover themselves, it says so in the Quran. I really like wearing this. This one and.